There we go. There we go. Um, this is quality Iron Neck content. Today, we talked about neck pain and headaches. This is a stability stream, right? We have two major themes when it comes to our streams. Is it a mobility stream where we focus on movement, where we focus on stretching, where we focus on making sure that we're supple humans, that we can move through ranges of motion very he well, supple. supple. And, or we have stability streams where we focus on making sure that with our increased movement, we have better control and use our muscles to control through extreme ranges of motion as well as helping to prevent pain. And like I said, we're gonna focus on actually two major muscle groups here. We're going to focus on our deep neck muscle group, our DNF, deep neck flexors, and also our cervical extensors, so the muscles back here. And both of them contribute to making sure that we stay upright when we game so that our head is not in that nerd neck position or forward head position. And then lastly, we are going to demonstrate this really cool tool. We're getting a little bit of distracted, but that's okay. But we are gonna answer the questions at the very end, so we're gonna hold off on the questions for now. Um, because we want to start talking about neck pain, we want to start talking about headaches. And today, like I said, we're gonna be going over a progression of exercises that are gonna help you build these muscles up here in front, as well as these muscles behind you. All okay. right, so let's get back to the original problem. We're yes, facing sir. that camera, so let's turn you sideways here. Yeah. Let's pretend this is the gaming desk. If he is leaning forward because he's in performance mode, and everyone knows that leaning forward makes you play better, am I right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you take a look at how these muscles look, if you look at the muscles in the front of his neck here, sit up a little bit more for me. The muscles on the front of his neck are all really stretched out. Those muscles are weak. The muscles on the back of his neck here, all these muscles, if you picture these as being the muscle fibers here, they're all nice and short and tight. And what happens is you have nerves that come out of your spine and they go over the top of your head, just like this. Ooh. So those nerves have to go through these tight muscles, they get pinched. And nerves don't like being pinched. In yeah. fact, they hate it. So when they get pinched, they send pain sensations all the way through the area that they provide sensation to. So what that's gonna do is gonna cause those headaches, those neck pain sensations that you guys are feeling. And a lot of times the solution is, A, to fix your posture, or at least change your posture every now and again, so you're not spending all your time in performance mode. So you gotta lean back, take it easy every now and again. Ah. Try to relax. This is a good posture to be in. Oh, Everyone wants wow. to hate on the lean back, but there's really nothing wrong with playing in this posture. But That's true. Very true. First thing you're gonna do is want to be in this better posture. The second is we're gonna try to strengthen all of those muscles that are on the front side of your neck here, those muscles that are weak, that are causing this problem to begin with. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Yep. We're gonna go through level one through level three. What are the exercises? Let's find out. Each of those are a progression, meaning they're, they get a little more difficult as you perform them. So if you're not able to do level two, you wanna go down to level one. If you can do level one easily, hey, try level two and then try level three. And we're gonna make recommendations for uh, the protocol and how you guys can implement this. Uh, but we want to first describe the actual exercise in itself so that you guys know exactly what you need to do. So number one, number one, we're going to we're gonna work on these muscles here in the front, the deep neck flexors. And we call this a chin tuck. So level one, all I'm doing, and what you can do is you can either use a book, you can use a towel, you can put it right here underneath your head, and Elliot's going to use this cushion here. And the reason why we want to put it here right at the at the top of your skull here is because it helps you it acts as this anchor to move into this nod movement, right? And you guys can see as I nod down, I make this nice double chin, then muscles here in the front of the neck. The number two, we're also elongating the backside, which guess what, Elliot? What doesn't that address both of the things that we talked about? It really does, Matt. Wow. Wow. So so what's the protocol here? How long should we hold it? And uh, how many should we be doing it? I'll just be demonstrating while you discuss this. Well, there's some tendon research out there that shows that holding a contraction isometrically, which means not movingly, for 45 seconds can help relieve pain for up to an hour. So that's typically what I recommend. There's all kinds of different protocols you can use to actually 
uh, begin this process of strengthening your neck. You can do that isometric hold, which is going to be kind of the lowest level of neck strengthening protocol that you can use, but you can also do repetition. So if you're trying to do a little bit more of a concentric movement, that means where the muscles are actually contracting, you can start off doing three sets of 10, trying to work your way up to 30, and then eventually three sets of 15, trying to wake your, work your way up to 45. Exactly. So level one, we have this isometric protocol. And just to make it simple, we're gonna hold each one for five seconds. Okay, so tucking the chin, holding for five. You guys can see here, elongating the backside, tucking here. And what do we not wanna see, Elliot? What do we not wanna see when I'm doing this? We do not wanna see this muscle right here. So the SCM muscle, we don't want to you see guys. this muscle right here. Make it pop, there you go. You don't want to see this muscle firing. This is one of what we call the superficial muscles. So that's a big movement muscle. These muscles we're talking about are deep, deep, deep in your spine, right next to the spine. And those ones are responsible for stability. So they're not moving the head at all. If you've got the big muscles that are turning on that move the head, that means that you're just engaging the muscles that are already tight and pulling your head forward which is okay to strengthen those muscles, but it's not our intention here. Exactly, so five second hold, tuck the chin, making sure you're not activating your SCM, your sternocleidomastoid on both sides, and then you relax. And you start at 10 repetitions, and we gradually build that up. You can do that for three sets. So three sets of 10, five second hold each. That's level one. Okay, that's the most basic level of strengthening for these deep neck guys. Remember, the key thing is we're elongating the top side here. Nice, we get a stretch. And two, we get work on the front side of our neck. Boom. All right, so that's level two, Le uh, level one. Level two is what we'd like to focus on is just the eccentric phase. What we're gonna be doing is you're gonna lift your head up and then maintaining that tuck of the chin, you're gonna slowly lower it. And I'm gonna remove this support here. Just to show you guys again, you'll tuck your chin, You'll support yourself coming up and then slowly lower it coming down. That's your level two. And as Elliot said, the protocol can be, hey, I'm gonna start at 10 repetitions, then work up to 30, or start at 15 repetitions and work up to 45. But you'll notice that this is not an easy exercise. If I get up to 10, I'm already feeling sore here. So tuck Yo, the chin. Tetra, thank you for the Twitch Prime, by the way. Living, uh, lifting up, coming down. Tucking the chin, lifting up and then coming down, right? You're supporting yourself through the concentric phase or shortening phase and then lowering it. And you'll see that my, I'm not elongating my chin here. It's staying tucked and then I'm lowering it through. That's the way that we want you guys to do it. And we're not over utilizing this, right? I'm keeping it tucked. We're definitely gonna be activating it here, but we're not over emphasizing it. It's gonna be primarily in the deep neck muscles and you will begin to feel it a lot as you guys work through this. So level two, three sets of 10 to begin with, working up to about 15, then 20, then 25. And then level three, which is a combination of the both, right? We have the concentric and the eccentric phase, meaning we tuck the chin, we lift, and then we lower back down. And you wanna take the time to move through that, making sure that your chin stays tucked the whole time. So tuck, lift, hold, one, two, and then slowly down, and that's one repetition. And then again, tuck, lift, one, two, slowly back down. And again, tuck, lift, one, two, and then slowly back down. And I'm already feeling it after demonstrating all those. So again, we, we start with lower amount of repetitions and then work up. So now we're gonna be talking about all of these muscles back here, the deep neck extensor muscles. So these are muscles that are also responsible for helping support this position here like this. And mm -hmm. also this, but mostly this upright position here. Mm -hmm. So the first step that we're gonna do, we're gonna lay down on the table like this. Oh yeah. So Perfect. starting with your chin on the table here, what you're gonna try to do is just do that same chin tuck, just like this. Bring your chin down more. There we go. So we maintain the chin tuck and the head stays closer to neutral, right? And you see that the top of his head is elongating right over here. 
long view. I think we look instead down like that. There we go. So he's using these guys, these cervical extensors here. And again, we strengthen the front, elongate the back. But now we're actually uh, allowing the muscles on the backside to work isometrically, to strengthen in this position so that you guys can have postural endurance. Wow, what a word, postural endurance. Wow, much yep. posture. So level one, we're doing it prone on your stomach and we can use the same protocol. You're holding for about five seconds and then you relax. So starting again, you lift up, tuck the chin, looking down a little more so that, there we go, good. And making sure that the top side of the neck is elongated and then you relax. And then we repeat that for 10 repetitions and you can do that for two to three sets and we want to build up from there making sure that you guys work up and throughout this exercise making sure that you see his he has like this double chin and his chin does not elongate while he's doing it if he fatigues and demonstrate fatiguing oh yeah yeah you demonstrate that fatigue where you lose the chin tuck yeah so you see that elongation of his neck and that's what happens when you don't have the control, right? And you don't again, want this. This is not what we're going that's for. That's not what we're going for. We're keeping the chin tucked. We're lifting up and boom, nice and flat, perfect. So that's level one. And then level two, to increase the difficulty, you go on your hands and your knees. And so what's great about this, this one is that you're also using key muscles for your posture, your serratus, right? And so you'll see what Elliot did What's was the serratus the serratus is a muscle that starts at your ribs and attaches on the medial border of your shoulder blade basically what it does is as Elliot's demonstrating is it keeps the shoulder blade against the rib cage or against the thoracic wall or the wall of your middle back and that helps us maintain better posture a lot of the times when we have our shoulder tilted forward we're not using that muscle and so as Elliot presses down into the table, wow, it, he, his shoulder blade moves around his rib cage and, and he has very nice control. Not all of you guys will be able to do this, but Elliot, just amazing serratus control. Oh, it's wow. Flawless. Just, just flawless. One day kids, if you eat your Wheaties and do your serratus punches, one day you'll one be able day. to have this so, kind of scapular control. <laughs> so step one, he, he performs the plus motion, he pushes into the table. And then step two, he tucks his chin, good, and elongates his neck. Elongates meaning he thinks of really lengthening this part of his neck here. So bring it down like that. Yeah, there we go. Really elongating here, right? And so he holds that again for five seconds and then relaxes. And then so step one, push. Step two, elongate and tuck the chin. Look at that. Dang, look how tall he's gotten. Is that man seven feet? I think so. I think so. Wow. Seven feet of pure alpha male. <laughs> so level two, we're holding at five seconds. And this alpha male is demonstrating, pushing into the table, tucking his chin. Beautiful elongation of those neck muscles. Just really beautiful. Wow. 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 Okay, and so he's holding it, and that is level two. Again, the protocol, 10 repetition, five second hold, performing for two to three sets, and then working up, working up from there. Level three, what you guys can do is, guess what, I get some resistance here, I put it be behind my head, and then I push down into the table, and guess what, it's the exact same movement. So I'm gonna use my serratus first, activate the serratus, and then, I tuck my chin, elongating the back part of my neck and tucking my chin. And then I hold. Whoa. Whoa. That's so hard. That's more than Whoa. gravity. And then relax. Oh my God. Oh. This is like uh, Dragon Ball Z in the, in the training center. You turn on gravity, uh, 3X gravity. So push into the table, extend the neck, Tucking the chin, holding for five seconds, and relax. Step one, press. Step two, tuck the chin and elongate the backside of the neck. And as you guys do this, as I said, 
We will be building postural endurance. You will also be elongating, creating space for the nerves that Elliot talked about in the very beginning for them to travel through this small triangle of muscles at the top or base of your skull here, as well as as they exit out the spine through the foramen, okay, little holes. They're gonna come out there and you, you create space for them and that allows you to minimize the risk of developing headaches. Great, great. We're gonna set something up, demonstrate something really great for you guys that's also gonna be beneficial in strengthening our neck, avoiding, avoiding headaches. You have level one? Level one, ooh. Level one. And level two, right here. Boom. All right, we're both gonna use it. For those of you guys that don't know, we are now affiliated with Iron Neck. We've been using this device for a long time, so it's not like we're just shilling for them. So this is the Iron Neck show. We're wearing this. If you guys watch The Office, you will remember Dwight using this exact tool to uh, lift, lift. And so, yeah, we're gonna be demonstrating some exercises. Should we use level one or level two? Tell me Let's what start to do. with level one. So okay. there's two levels to the Iron Neck. They have these devices, which are kind of like this halo up here, and it has this rotating piece like this that goes all the way around. And what this essentially does is it helps to strengthen those deep neck flexors, but also gets rotational movement at the same time. Mm -hmm. The lower level, which is much cheaper, is this version here, where you just have a weight attached to one of these rings in one of these directions or down here like this, and you can help, and you can use it to strengthen in kind of single planes. But this is definitely the more superior model as you can rotate it 360 degrees and ultimately do 360 movement with your body while you've got it on. So but we'll start off just showing you guys how this the base trend. model works. Oh my God. Oh, ow? Yep. Okay. No, that's perfect. I feel, it feels really stable. Really snug. And then this bottom chin strap, I think you did a good job of putting that one on. I did it. All okay, right. guys. So we have an anchor here that we're going to use. You, this comes with attachments that you can use to put in a door, uh, wrap around a pole, anything like that. But we're going to use the anchor that we have. All right, ready? Here we go. Time to get the strong iron neck. Big step back. You know how you guys iron clothes to keep your clothes straight? We're going to iron your, your neck, neck to keep your neck straight. Boom. So the first protocol I like to use here is just have people stand nice and straight. You can feel that same type of movement taking place where everything is just kind of holding isometrically. Again, that means without movement of the muscle. Oh. Oh. How does that feel, Matt? It's difficult, but it's pretty great. I definitely feel the resistance. I think it's a really easy way to apply resistance for your cervical extensors, especially since it's applied right here. It's similar to if I use a, the band, but just makes it a little easier. Right. Wow. Wow. See, and there's a lot of other exercises that you guys can do specific to gaming, right? Because what we're trying to do is build postural endurance and utilize our, maybe our rotator cuff muscles if we do a lot of shoulder aim. If you can find a way to set this up in front of your setup and actually train uh, something like aim lab or Ooh. something like that while you're doing this, bam, the ultimate headache destroying device. Yep. Wow, so that was also, actually really tough. Actually, go ahead and now we're going to do concentric level two here. Mm, okay. So head forward and back. You're doing the same type of chin tucks that we were doing before. You're looking for these SCM muscles not to be overactive. Take up slack. We have this resistance band here, and Elliot's going to be demonstrating. He's maintaining the chin tuck, maintaining the use of his deep neck muscles here, and then he's going to be rotating, right? And this adds this next level of control for the neck. And actually, if you guys watch uh, F1 racing, um, this is a uh, 
tool that they utilize to keep their neck strong because they have to be able to withstand high g-forces as they're making these turns through really high speed tracks um, and they need to develop the strength otherwise it can irritate some of the muscles their joints in their neck so this is a key way that we can strengthen that and while obviously gamers are not going through the same level of g-force maybe none at all we are holding these suboptimal postures that we talk about all the time that forward head position that this tool the iron neck can help us develop this strength and help us develop this control so it, it's uh, honestly one of the coolest pe pieces of technology i know it looks kind of weird he has a little ufo over his head right but his neck muscles are out of this world you get it wow shut up man ufo oh out God. of this world Woo okay so it's shaking my head so the other thing that i wanted to talk about is deep neck flexors we think about them as muscles that are just kind of on behind the neck like this and they're only kind of in a straight line so they only do that deep foot neck flex blah neck flexion motion but they're also engaged when we are kind of looking to the side have our head slightly tilted and we can't necessarily train those aspects of that muscle all the lateral fibers the fibers that most of the sides by just doing straight plane movements so in order to engage the muscles all the way through from the left side to the right side you really do need to be turning your head to really engage them all the way through that range so that's why this thing is really important as well and also if you guys want to practice perfect posture while you're just kind of standing here hold on one second on that oh. what you can also do are these 360 spins so trying to keep your head as straight as you can this will help you develop overall good body posture so keep going you guys have heard of 360 no scopes this is the 360 perfect posture using the iron neck wow and guess what after you do this every single 360 no scope is instant headshot it's actually you know bam, fa bam, a bam, fact bam. backed by science 360 no scope 360 bam. no scope backed by bam, science bam. what's up bf what do you have boys oh my god <laughs> what do you have boys Science! 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 And so we're almost running near the end where we're going to be answering some questions, but he's going to demonstrate one more additional exercise that we can do with the iron neck. And so what he's doing is he's working on maintaining that optimal position of his head, keeping his chin tucked, utilizing the great muscles deep and his cervical extensors, and then also working on his postural muscles because what are we doing when we're gaming? What we're doing is we're trying to maintain it, but we can't. We bring our head forward and we're also moving. So guess what? We can build up that, dare I say, esports specific endurance of keeping our head in a nice tucked posture. And then, hey, as we move the mouse, we're externally rotating, internally rotating. So he is working on esports specific endurance. And, and there we go. So, um, Ellie's gonna just demonstrate a couple more head spins just for fun. Um, there we go. There we go. Um, this is quality Iron Neck content. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need individualized coaching for your injuries, sleep, exercise, or nutrition, you can check out our Patreon. And of course, you can catch us live on YouTube or Twitch. Play more, hurt less.